Liberty may have ended last season on a sour note, getting destroyed by Oregon in the Fiesta Bowl, but the Flames are not extinguished. This team is loaded with talent, and Jamie Chadwell's squad is now gearing up for a big college football playoff run. So welcome back to the Gridiron Expert, guys. Ready to break down the Liberty Flames, part of this mini-series of group of five teams that we will be breaking down before we give you our projected conference standings for every group of five conference. But as always, please continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, and check out everything down in the description below. That includes our website, thegridironexpert.com, home of our exclusive expert picks, home to some of the best college football and NFL spread picks in the entire country for one of the lowest prices in the entire country. So if you haven't signed up for those yet, you are truly missing out. The earlier you can sign up, the better. The season starts in, what, two weeks? So the earlier you sign up, the better it's going to be for you. You will win big with us as we are beating out over 80% of the national handicappers each of the last six years. So go sign up for those expert picks today and become a member of our GE Nation because you will want to be a part of it once this season starts. So Liberty, man, what a year. Jamie Chavo comes in, leaves Coastal Carolina to go to Liberty, a move that many considered maybe a lateral move or kind of just a horizontal move. Really didn't go up or down. It was just the same. A lot of people thought he'd go for a Power 5 program. Leaves Coastal, goes to Liberty. Massive success in year one, 13-1 and last year. Only two games for them were decided by one possession. So dominating in the Conference USA, led Liberty to a New Year's Six Bowl game but lost to Oregon 45-6. Now they are loaded with uh, you know tons of talent again, but you can't help but wonder if they were to go undefeated. They will be in the hunt for one of those playoff spots. You know the highest ranked group of five champion goes to the playoff. But will the weak strength of schedule hurt them? Will last year's performance against Oregon hurt them? It's not supposed to affect someone from a year to year basis, but everybody's going to remember what happened when they played a top dog. How bad that game was. No one wants to see that again in a playoff matchup. So Liberty is a very very interesting team. But you look at the roster. It's a matter of really what Liberty doesn't have rather than what they do have. Because what they do have is one of the best offenses in the country. They averaged over 38 points per game last year, nearly 500 yards per game, 293 rushing yards per game in 2023. The key for that is their quarterback, Caden Salter. Threw for over 2,800 yards, 32 touchdowns, rushed for over 1,000 yards, and 12 touchdowns. So 44 total touchdowns for Salter. Dangerous dual threat quarterback, one of the best in the country. The fact that he stuck around for another year at the Flames, didn't transfer somewhere else, was massive for this squad. Then you've got the running back core. Quentin Cooley chose to return after rushing for over 1,400 yards and 16 touchdowns last year. Behind him, Billy Lucas, who nearly rushed for 600 yards last year. So you've got three guys that rushed for at least 500 yards in the 2023 season. This rushing attack will be just as good, if not better, in 2024. They do lose four of their top five wide receivers from last year, including C.J. Daniels, but they do return Trayon Sibley, and they have two first-team Conference USA offensive linemen returning after giving up just nine sacks last season. So Liberty offensively going to be one of the best in the conference. Actually, I think they are the best in the Conference USA and will be one of the best in the nation. Defensively, eight starters are back. They've got to improve in the secondary. That was Liberty's weakness last year. They gave up 256 passing yards per game. Four of their top six tacklers do return, though, and their secondary is much more experienced. Veteran secondary. You've got Brylin Green, who led the team with five interceptions last year. You've got Quentin Reese. You've got Marion Williams. All those guys back in the secondary to you know, make up more of a veteran squad in year two under Chadwell Systems. The defensive line is extremely loaded and should improve significantly after only getting 25 sacks in 2023. So the pass rush should be a lot better. The secondary should be a lot better. Liberty has a chance to be even better than last year, and that's a scary thought considering they did run the table going 13-0 before their bowl loss. Take a look at the schedule. We mentioned it. The Flames play in the worst conference in the country. The Conference USA is extremely, extremely weak. And we saw that last year. There is no doubt in my mind that Liberty is the best team in this conference. Could that hurt them in their quest to make the college football playoff? And is there a team in the non-conference that can maybe pull off an upset over the Flames? Well, I'll tell you right now, I think they start 3-0. They will beat Campbell. They will beat New Mexico State. They will beat UTEP. The toughest game there, maybe New Mexico State. They played the Aggies twice last year, once in the regular season, once in the Conference USA Championship game, winning that championship game by 14 points. But 
New Mexico State loses tons. They lose their quarterback, their top two rushers, their top six wide receivers, their top seven tacklers, and their head coach. They had 712 yards of offense against New Mexico State in that championship game last year. It could be just about the same this year, even though they have to travel all the way out there. But they're going to beat New Mexico State, and they're going to beat UTEP, who is now under a first-year head coach in Scotty Walden. They won by 14 points last year as well. Those two games, some of the closer games for Liberty when it was all said and done, even though they were dominating those games for the majority of them with like, you know, some garbage time touchdowns, especially that UTEP game. But regardless, at home, first-year head coach, Liberty will destroy UTEP. ECU is a trap game. Maybe you want to call it that. This is a dangerously improved Pirate squad that's extremely well coached. 14 starters are back. They have talent at quarterback with the transfer Jake Garcia coming in. This team only gave up 122 rushing yards per game last year and have a lot more experience on the defensive side of the ball now. So Liberty getting this game at home is big. ECU is a team that went, what, 2-10 and 10 last year? I think it go all the way to a bowl game this year. They are a dangerous squad. And if Liberty is kind of sleepwalking, the Pirates will put up a much tougher fight than they expect. Still think Liberty gets the win. They are 4-0. and oh. That is one of three tough games on their schedule, though. The three biggest games of their schedule. ECU is one of them. The second one, the following week, at Appalachian State. I think many would agree that if Liberty is going to lose a game this year. It's more than likely going to come on the road at Appalachian State. Not an easy place to play. Uh, a team that is a Sun Belt Conference favorite this year, them and Texas State, maybe the best two teams in that conference. But the problem with the Mountaineers is their defense. I think the offense is going to be pretty dang dangerous. They've got a very good quarterback. They've got a very good wide receiver core. They will test this Liberty secondary, and the Mountaineers are going to be the toughest test they faced all year long. But App State gave up 178 rushing yards per game last year. While they will improve on the defensive side of the ball, I do not believe they've improved significantly enough to stop down this dangerous of a Liberty rushing attack and this veteran of a Liberty offense. The Flames, it's close. They only had two one-possession games last year, two one-possession wins last year. I think this is a one-possession win. It will be close, but they get a win in Boone. They beat App State. And after that, you look at the rest of the schedule, you go, where do they lose, if at all? Where do they lose? Ford International right before double bye weeks. They play Ford International on October 8th, and they don't play another game until October 23rd, so 15 days off. They will beat the Panthers. They beat them by 32 last year. feel pretty confident about that. So they are what now? 6-0 at the halfway point of the season. Coming out of the bye week, I'm going to tell you right now they're going to win out. I mean, look at how favorable that schedule is. Kennesaw State making their debut at the FBS level. They were cruised past the Owls. So, another win there. 7-0. Jacksonville State, a tough game that Liberty gets at home. And the Gamecocks have to replace a lot of talent from last year's squad that went 9-4. And, and Liberty won that game 31-13. The Gamecocks arguably were better last year than they're going to be this year, even though last year was their first year at the FBS level. Liberty won by 18. The Flames arguably got better. The Gamecocks arguably got a little bit worse. It's around the same margin, 14, 17 points. Liberty gets the win. Middle Tennessee, first-year head coach Derek Mason coming in. They only won by seven last year, 42 to 35. They had 401 rushing yards on the day, but now the Blue Raiders return just seven total starters. So a brand-new head coach, not a lot of talent. They will cruise past Middle Tennessee. They will cruise past UMass, who they beat 49 to 25 last year. The Minutemen, unfortunately, just don't have it right now. Maybe next year when they finally join a conference in the MAC, they'll start to contend a little bit better. But right now, going to be another rough year for Don Brown's squad. Although I will say, I did win a national championship with the Minutemen on College Football 25 on the PS5. So I won't take a little credit for that. But they will beat UMass. Western Kentucky is the only tough game left after that. And I do think they get past the Mountaineers, or excuse me, the Hilltoppers. 42 to 29 is what they won last year. The uh, Hilltoppers, I think, can hang with them offensively. But arguably their biggest competitor in the Conference USA, and it comes on Senior Day for the Flames. So the biggest competitor, the toughest conference game, and it's at home against a Western Kentucky team that might be able to hang offensively, but still has some questions defensively. Liberty is not losing that game on Senior Day. They take care of business and then round out with a convincing win on the road at Sam Houston, a Sam Houston team that will improve in their second year at the FBS level, but nowhere near enough to beat Liberty despite only losing by five points last year, a 21-16 win for the Flames. So maybe a trap game if you want to call it that, but at 11-0 with a potential playoff spot riding, Jamie Chadwell's not losing that game against the Bearcats. So all in all, guys, yeah, Liberty's going undefeated again. That's what we believe. They have the best quarterback in this conference, the best offense in this conference, one of the best quarterbacks and offenses in the country, a great head coach in Jamie Chadwell who's practically succeeded everywhere he has been, one of the easiest schedules 
in the entire country and one of the easiest, if not the easiest, conference in the entire country. Only three big games, ECU, App State, and Western Kentucky, that I think could maybe derail their season. Two of those are coming at home. This Liberty team is stacked from top to bottom. I expect 12-0. I expect another berth in the Conference USA Championship game. More than likely, they will win that Conference USA Championship game. But at 13-0 for the second year in a row, will that be enough to get them into the college football playoff? Or could we see a potential one-loss group of five team? Boise State, Memphis, Texas State, Tulane, someone like that, jumping them and getting into the playoff. Liberty is an interesting team this year. The talent is there. The coaching is there. They are going to thrive. They're going to win. But will it be enough to make the 12-team playoff? Find out here in a few days with our official playoff prediction video. But the Flames will be sweating it out just a little bit on Selection Sunday. So guys, as always, thank you so much for watching us here at the Gridiron Expert on YouTube. Make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos. And of course, check out everything down in the description below. That includes our website, thegridironexpert.com. Home to those expert picks. Some of the best college football and NFL spread picks in the entire country. Do not miss out on those guys. We're beating out over 80% of the national handicappers each of the last six years. It's one of the lowest prices in the nation with some of the best customer service in the nation. Win big with us. Sign up today. Become a member of our GE Nation. And once again, as always, thank you so much for watching. And we'll see you next time right here on the Gridiron Expert.